Before clicking that buy button for a brand new PC, try these Premiere Pro optimizations and it might just save you a pretty penny. If your previews are lagging or dropping frames like this, try decreasing the resolution to half or one fourth. If you're working in a 4K timeline, one fourth resolution will be 1080p, which is still really good. You can even drop it as low as one eighth if it's really choppy. I personally work in one fourth resolution all the time and you can barely tell the difference. And of course, this only affects the preview resolution. The exported video will still be in full resolution. Next, make sure you're using GPU acceleration. Go to Edit, Preferences, Media and make sure these two boxes are checked. Then go to File, Project Settings, and enable GPU acceleration. Even if you don't have a dedicated GPU, you can still use an integrated one that's in your processor. The next thing is deleting your cache. Premiere stores a lot of additional files such as video or audio previews, which can take up a lot of space, thus decreasing performance. So click Edit, Preferences and select Media Cache. Then just click Delete. And you can make it so it auto deletes these files every certain amount of days. For me, 7 is fine, so every week these files will be deleted automatically. And you really should be using an SSD to store these files. So check if the default location is an SSD. If not, you can change it right here. Also from this window, you can go to Memory and make sure you're allocating enough RAM for Premiere. I have 64 gigs in total and I'm allowing Premiere to use 52 of those gigs. You don't want to completely max out the RAM that Premiere gets because other applications or Premiere itself might get unstable. Generally I'd say that allocating 70% of your RAM to Premiere will be stable and I wouldn't go much higher than that. If you're working on a heavy project or have a lot of assets, <laughs> this one is for you. Go to Sequence, Simplify Sequence. From here, you'll be able to delete disabled clips, unused files, and generally clean up your sequence. So this is the before, and this is the after. It looks so much better. One of the best things you can do is use proxies. These are just lower quality replacements that you use when editing. So I have this bin with all of my footage inside it. I can select it, right click, select proxy, create proxies. I'll select quarter resolution, ProRes Proxy, I'll add a watermark and click OK. It will launch Media Encoder and render out these videos. After that, you can toggle between these proxies and the original footage with this button. If you don't see it, click this plus symbol and drag it here. You'll be able to tell when you're using proxies by this watermark or this button being pressed. And just take a look at how much faster the footage plays. This is the original footage and this is the proxy. Next, try working in a lower resolution. Maybe you have an old laptop but trying to edit in a 4K timeline and it's not exactly working out. Well, I'd say drop it down to 1080p. 99% of people won't even notice the resolution difference. And you'll save your sanity and time by not having to deal with 100 crashes per day. So go to Sequence, Sequence Settings and make it 1920 by 1080 and make sure to check this box so your graphics scale down correctly. However, you'll need to correct the scaling of your footage manually. So select your footage, then go to Clip, Video Options, and click Fit to Frame. This will automatically scale all of your footage to the size of the sequence. Next, drop down your bitrate when rendering. I know it's convenient to use these presets, I generally use the Match Source Adaptive High Bitrate preset, but this uses around 75 megabits per second, which is quite high. If you're rendering like a screen recording or something simple, you can drop it down as low as like 12 megabits per second with no significant quality loss. In my testing, changing this setting renders my videos around 30% faster, which is pretty significant and might be worth using. Okay, this one is really useful. Use the global effects button to disable all effects. If you don't see this button, just click the plus symbol and drag it here. Clicking this will temporarily disable all the effects so you can work faster. Things like lumetric color or distort effects really slow down the playback and this button temporarily disables every single effect in your timeline making it easier to work. This one might be very simple, but is worth trying if nothing else works. If you're truly unsure what's causing the problem, 
try restarting your computer. Or better yet, turn off your computer, then switch off the power supply. After a couple minutes pass, just turn your computer back on as usual. This will completely stop the flow of electricity through your components and essentially hard restart your computer. This actually has saved my bacon in the past and it might sound stupid but in some cases it actually works. So that's it, I hope these tips helped you to solve your performance issues and if not, it might be time for a hardware upgrade. Anyways, I wish you happy editing and I'll see you in the next video.